University is famed for its wealth of beautiful colleges, and Rob's Oxford has covered most of these. But what of the many buildings of the university itself? In this series, we introduce the most iconic of these, all carefully selected according to their visual impact and importance within university life. Here, Rob Walters, your Oxford guide, brings you the Sheldonian Theatre. The Sheldonian Theatre has a key role in university life. We're approaching it from the south, flying over Radcliffe Square. It's the building with the blue-green cupola. And now we have a better view from the north across Broad Street. This is where the students join the university, here called matriculation, and here that they finish by graduation. It is also used for important lectures, as a meeting room for the university's management body and as a concert hall. These main gates are in Broad Street, but the Cat Street approach provides an important side view. As you can see as we pass through the gates, the Sheldonian is rectangular with a rounded north end. To our left you can see the old Bodleian Library, and to our right is the Clarendon Building. The actual frontage is tucked away in the top left-hand corner. Let's have a look. Impressive, eh? It was opened in 1669 and funded almost entirely by Gilbert Sheldon, Archbishop of Canterbury and a former warden of All Souls College here in Oxford. It faces the oldest building of Oxford University, the Divinity School. And there's a good reason for that. One of the regular uses of the Divinity School is as a changing room for the degree ceremonies. Back to Broad Street and the rounded rear end of the building where it is narrowly bordered by the Clarendon Building on its left and the History of Science Museum on its right. The architect was Oxford student and later Professor of Astronomy Christopher Wren. This was his first completed design and is said to be based on the Theatre of Marcellus in Rome, though smaller and with a roof. Let's have a look inside. Hmm, this splendid Baroque space is the main area and it fills most of the building. The two jutting out boxes are for the proctors, they're the disciplinarians of the university. And here is where the head of the university sits for ceremonies. Turning to the flat end of the building, we can see the impressive organ above the main entry door. This is the business end of the theatre, where degrees are distributed and orchestras perform, and it's where the Oxford Beatles sometimes play to a packed audience. <laughs> now look up and you will see a grand painting spanning the whole ceiling. It was painted by John Streeter, Charles II's painter, and represents, and I quote here, truth descending upon the arts and sciences to expel ignorance from the university. It's huge, yet there are no pillars to detract from its wondrous sight. How did Wren do it? Let's float up to the attic and have a look. And rather than being supported from below, the ceiling and roof combine a clever arrangement of trusses and short beams to bridge the wide span. The stairway in front of us leads to the eight-sided cupola above. Let's go up and see what can be seen from up there. First we are looking east and we can see Hartford College with its famous bridge. And beyond that the Tower of New College. From the next window we are looking over School's Quad, with the tips of the Radcliffe camera and the University Church beyond. Turning towards the west, we are given a glimpse into Exeter College's Quad. And that is then followed by the view along Broad Street to Balliol College. Wow, the Sheldonian is both iconic and panoramic. Well, there you have it. That's Christopher Wren's Sheldonian Theatre. Some building, some man.
a true polymath and a credit to the university which trained him. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe.